إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invented into this religion of ours وكل محدثة بدعة And everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٌ ضُلَالَةٌ And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضُلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we enter the month of Sha'ban, the month preceding Ramadan. And again, as we've mentioned, that the Sahaba used to prepare for Ramadan for five months preceding it. And here we are a month away. So we have to start to address these things that usually can spoil our fast or spoil our Ramadan. From them, the topic is the tongue. And we've alluded to this over the past few weeks because every topic that we mention, the tongue comes into play. So I want to remind myself and you, with the warnings, the dire warnings about the tongue and what it can cause us of harm in this life and the day of resurrection. And Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَلَا أُخَبِّرُكَ بِرَأْسِ الْأَمْرِ وَعُمُودِهِ وَذُرْوَةِ سَنَامِهِ قُلْتُ بَلَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قَالَ رَأْسُ الْأَمْرِ الْإِسْلَامِ وعموده الصلاة وذروة سنامه الجهاد ثم قال ألا أخبرك بملاك ذلك كله فقلت بلى يا رسول الله فأخذ بلسانه وقال كف عليك هذا قلت يا نبي الله وإنا لمؤاخذون بما نتكلم به فقال ثقلتك أمك وهل يكب الناس على وجوههم أو قال على من مناخرهم إلا حصائد ألسنتهم. This hadith that we have which is حسن صحيح in the Sunan of al-Tirmidhi, Mu'adh bin Jabal he narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Shall I not inform you of the head of the matter, its pillar and its peak?" So Mu'adh, just like all of the Sahaba, eager to know and have the guidance that will give them success. He said, Bala, of course, certainly tell me, O Messenger of Allah. So the Messenger of Allah he said, the head of the matter is Islam. The pillar of that Islam is the prayer, is the salah. And its peak is jihad. The lawful jihad, the just jihad, the jihad according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Not the falsified ones that many of the miscreants use nowadays. Then the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Shall I not tell you the foundation of all of this? So again, Mu'adh said, Bala, certainly tell me, O Messenger of Allah, 
وسلم, so the Prophet وسلم, took a hold of his tongue. He took a hold of his tongue and he said, Restrain this. Control this. I said, O Messenger of Allah, وسلم, will we be taken to account for what we say with it? So the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, he used an expression that's commonly used. He said, May your mother be bereaved of you, O Mu'ad. Is there anything that will throw the people into the hellfire on their faces or on their noses? In one narration, except the harvest of the tongue. So this tongue, although it's a small piece of flesh, it's the strongest muscle in the body. This tongue that's in your mouth that is small compared to the rest of your body, it controls the rest of it as we will see. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu maqal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, عَلِّمُوا وَيَسِّرُوا وَلَا تُعَسِّرُوا وَإِذَا غَضِبَ أَحَدَكُمْ فَلْيَسْكُتْ This hadith which is sahih, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, teach and make things easy on the people. Do not make them difficult. And when one of you is angry, then he should remain silent. He should again, it's going back to restraining the tongue and holding back the tongue. On the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْمُتْ That the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever believes in, the, in Allah and the last day should say what is good or remain silent. If you have nothing good to say, train yourself with this. Then don't say it. Zip your mouth. Restrain your tongue. Hold back from saying it. Because many times it just leads to more and more evil. This was a wisdom given by Allah and His Messenger ﷺ. Yet many of us ignore this call because we're so eager to just let our tongues run, to let our anger go and the likes of these matters. And Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhuma an an Nabi ﷺ qal al-Muslim man salim al-Muslimun al-Muslimuna min lisanhi wa yadih wal muhajir مَنْ هَجَرَ مَا نَهَى اللَّهُ عَنْهِ رَوَاهُ Bukhari. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, A Muslim is the one who avoids harming other Muslims with his tongue in his hands. And we have many narrations that show the good character being to all of the people. That you should love for all the people what you love for yourself. That that good character is for others, but especially for your brothers and sisters in faith. That a Muslim is the one whom other Muslims, they're safe from their tongues and their hands, from you insulting them, cursing them, di- di- diminishing them, putting them down, insulting them by names, and the likes of these matters. And you're, they're safe from your hands. And the muhajir, the immigrant, is the one who gives up and abandons all what Allah has forbidden. <clears throat> what Allah has forbidden, when you give that up, it's like you've made a hijrah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَكْثَرُ خَطَايَا إِبْنِ آدَمْ فِي لِسَانِهِ And this hadith is in Sahih Al-Jami' by Shaykh Al-Albani, Rahimahullah. He said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, the majority of the sins of the children of Adam, they're because of his tongue. The majority of the sins, and we pay no attention to it. We, don't, we pay no Sometimes we may say, okay, I need to not say anything. Sometimes we say, okay, I'm not going to say a bad word today. Sometimes we, we may think that. But look at the majority of the sins of the children of Adam will be because of that small piece of flesh that's between the two jaws. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, don't speak unless your speech is going to be good, unless it has a clear benefit. And if there's any doubt to whether you should say something or not, then remain silent. When benefit in speaking, is, when benefit in speaking or not speaking is equal, then the sunnah is to not speak because it's possible that your permissible speech may be something that becomes impermissible or disliked. قال ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه يا لسان قل خيرا تغنم واسكت عن شر تسلم من قبل أن تندم ابن مسعود he said in an authentic narration relating to him رضي الله عنه may Allah be pleased with him he said to himself he said oh tongue he said he spoke to his tongue O tongue, speak goodness and be rewarded, or remain silent and be safe, lest you become regretful. And what does the tongue bring for many of us, except for many moments and moments and times of regret? What does the tongue bring except for regret? 
So say what is good or be silent. Be careful what you speak. The reward will be you with you for restraining that flesh, that piece of flesh. Safeguard yourself so that you're not regretful. And Shaykh al Albani, he authenticated this as well. Sahil ibn Sa'ad, radiallahu anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man tawakkala bi ma bayna rijlayhi wa ma bayna lihyayhi, tawakkaltu lahu bil jannah. Rawahu al Bukhari. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Whoever guarantees me the chastity of, between, of what is between his or her legs. Meaning, you're chaste. You don't do forbidden acts outside of marriage that you should not be doing with the opposite gender. <coughs> Whoever can maintain the chastity of what is between the legs and what is between their jaws, meaning their tongue, meaning they only speak the khair, they only speak the good, they don't insult others, they don't lie or cheat or backbite or slander because all of this comes back to the tongue, then I guarantee for him or her jannah. A guarantee for Jannah, for controlling what is between the legs and what is between the two jaws. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, radiallahu anhu, he narrated, he said, عن أبي سعيد al-Khudri, رفاعه قال, إذا أصبح ابن آدم فإن الأعضاء كلها يكفر اللسان فتقول, اتق الله فينا فإنما نحن بك فإن استقمت استقمنا وإن أعوججت أعوججنا رواه الترمذي وهذا حديث حسن The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said when the son of Adam well actually Abu Sa'id and Al-Khudri رضي الله عنه he said it and has been raised to the level of getting it from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said when the son of Adam wakes up in the morning all of the body parts they bow down to the tongue can you imagine the strength of your arm the strength of your, of your leg, of your foot, the strength of your body. Yet all of these things, because you don't see it, don't think it doesn't happen. All of these body parts, every morning they wake up and they bow down to the tongue. They bow down to the tongue, saying, Fear Allah with respect to us, we're only a part of you. Because if you're good, we're going to be good. But if you're corrupt, we're going to be corrupt. This is the power of that piece of flesh that's between the two jaws. If you're straight, we're going to be straight. But if you're crooked, we're going to be crooked. This is the power that the tongue holds. Malik, he related to me from Zayd ibn Aslam, from his father, that Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, he came upon Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, he was pulling his tongue. He was pulling on it, not just grabbing, he was pulling on it. Almost as if he was hurting himself. فَقَالَ عُمَرْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ مَا غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ He said to him, stop doing this. Release yourself from it. Stop it. Allah has forgiven you your sins. You're the best in this ummah after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As clearly defined, without a doubt, that Abu Bakr al-Siddiq رضي الله عنه is the best in this ummah after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the first khalifa, the one deserving the khalifa رضي الله عنه, may Allah be pleased with him. He told him, restrain, stop, yani stop this. Allah has forgiven you your sins. فَقَالَ أَبُوْ بَقْرِ السِّدِّيقِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ إِنَّ هَذَا أَوْرَدَنِي, أوردني الْمَوَارِدِ He said <coughs> to Umar رضي الله عنه, this has brought me to dangerous places. And what did we know of Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه? Except that he was in the best of character. He was the best of character. The quickest to implement the Qur'an, the quickest to implement the Sunnah. Yet look what he's doing, he's questioning himself, he's calling himself to account, he's warning himself. So he's saying, this, this tongue has brought me to dangerous places. What about us, who do not have the iman of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, who do not have the herewith daily, the consciousness of Allah, that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had and the likes of these matters. And Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, he said, سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من رأى منكرا فليغيره بيده فإن لم يستطع فبلسانه فإن لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك أضعف الإيمان رواه النساء وهذا الحديث صحيح The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was heard to have said whoever amongst you sees an evil then let him change it with his hand 
And if he cannot do so, then he should change it with his tongue by speaking about it and warning or calling to the truth, etc. And if he cannot do so, then he should at least hate it in his heart. But this is the weakest of faith. But this is the weakest of faith. So we know, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that when someone is sincerely advising another person because they see some evil and the situation is to taken into account, then you can advise, and this is not from having a bad tongue. You can advise, but your advice should be advice, not criticism. You should advise, but your should advising should have the ways and the mannerisms of the Prophet ﷺ, that you do it with kindness and that you do it with gentleness. And even if it's something where you're stern because of what the evil you're seeing, let it be something that's done that doesn't bring you into evils, like where you curse or you insult, or you get to the point of, we've seen in the previous weeks, where you say, you know, Allah will not forgive you, or Allah will not enter you into Jannah, as we mentioned in the hadith a few weeks back. Don't let your tongue bring you to these places. So you can advise, and it's not from a bad tongue to advise, but do not enter the areas which are haram. Uqba ibn Amr radiallahu anhu, he said, I asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how can salvation be achieved? And najat, how can I get that? How can I achieve salvation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, أَمْسِكْ عَلَيْكَ لِسَانَكَ وَلِيَسَعَكَ بَيْتُكَ وَبْكِ عَلَى خَطِيئَتِكَ The Prophet ﷺ told him, you want to save yourself? You really want salvation? You really want to enter Jannah? He said to him, control your tongue. The first advice, control your tongue. And from the tongue is not just cursing. We all think it's just saying bad words. This is not the only thing we mean by control your tongue. The tongue is what lies. The tongue is what backbites. The tongue is what slanders. The tongue is what insults. The, the tongue is what mocks. The tongue is what ridicules. The tongue is what cheats. The tongue is what deceives. All of it comes back to the tongue. So the first advice, you want to be saved? You want to save yourself? Control your tongue. Watch out what you say. The second and third advice he mentioned for the benefit, keep to your house. Suffice yourself your house. Yeah, and you don't always be that you always have to be looking for something better and bigger in terms of activities, always being out in the public, in the malls and the likes of these places. And the last one, weep over your sins. Weep over your sins. Cry over your sins. Because we will face Allah one day with those sins in a record. And guess what? At that point, your mouth's going to be sealed. My mouth will be sealed. Ain't no lying. Ain't no saying, I don't remember it. Ain't no saying, I didn't do it. Because the lips will be sealed. The tongue will not be able to speak. And the parts of your body, your limbs, they will all verify and all testify to what you did in this dunya. The tongue, control the tongue. Control it. So that you don't enter into this dangerous place. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet وسلم very clearly in many occasions he told us to restrain and control the tongue. That tongue from it emits evil speech. The worst of it shirk and kufr that you would say something that would exit you from Islam by associating partners with Allah, or that you would say some kufr, some acts or words of disbelief. From it is also from the tongue, the bid'ah, the innovations, that you would partake in something that people may think is good, but it's not from Rasulullah or those first generations. They are the best of mankind. That's who we should emulate. If they didn't do it, why do you think you got a better way to do it? If they didn't do tasbih a certain way, if they didn't do something around the, these uh, occasions of Isra and Mi'raj and the, the Mawlid and the likes of these, why are you doing it? Do you think you're better than them? That's where the tongue comes into play. Because the tongue then proposes and you know, puts forth that bid'ah, that innovation. Hypocrisy. The munafiq. They lie, they break their promises, they cheat, they deceive. 
What is the core thing behind that? It's the tongue. The backbiting, the slandering, the cursing, the insults. Remember, someone can come, Yom Al Qiyamah, the day of resurrection. Al Muflis. Who is the Muflis? When the Prophet ﷺ, he asked them, Atadruna man al Muflis, who is the one who is bankrupt? They said, the one who's got no money. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, no, the Muflis, the bankrupt one, is the one who came, bisalatihi wa siyamihi wa zakatihi. He came with his fasting and his prayers and his, his, his charity. But what? قَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا وَقَذَفَ هَذَا وَأَكَلَ مَا لَهَذَا It's the person, he comes on the resurrection. Tons of prayers, tons of fasting, tons of charity. But guess what? He insulted people. He insulted them. He belittled the people. He ate the wealth of these people. He spilled the blood of these people and the likes of these matters. The tongue. Behind it all. So shaitan, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we gave that khutbah warning about him, reminding us of the warning. He is the avowed enemy. Allah, as Allah said, treat him as an enemy. Treat him as an enemy. Arm yourself in every one way, and the way you arm yourself is with tawheed, and with dhikr Allah, with the remembrance of Allah, and making dua to Allah. Shaitan, treat him as an enemy. He wants mastery over your tongue. He's not coming for your biceps and your triceps and your, your legs and your, all this. He's not. He's coming for your tongue because if he gets mastery over that, he masters all of you. Shaitan wants us to have disagreements. It's the source of what? One little word, you may think it's good, but it gets out. And then what? Comes from it? A larger argument. Then a larger argument. Then a larger argument. Only leading what? Some husbands and wives to split and get divorced. Some others to never talk to one another. Parents with their children, children with their parents, siblings to one another, family members. Why? The tongue. It all goes back to that. So shaitan, that's the way he tries to get it. So he can corrupt your dunya and your akhirah. So be mindful of this. An Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, an Ata' ibn Abi Rabbah, rahimahullah, qala, inna al-rajul liyatakallam fi ghadabihi bi kalamatin يهدم بها عمل عمل ستين سنة أو سبعين سنة. Ibn Rajab he reported that Atta bin Abi Rabah he said may Allah have mercy on him. Verily a man might speak a word in anger by which his good deeds of sixty and seventy years will be destroyed. Imagine building all this up to meet Allah bi ibn Allah Taala as a believer on the day of resurrection. You prayed, you fasted, you did good deeds and good deeds and good deeds, but one moment. You can speak a word in anger and it can burn 60 to 70 years of good deeds. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, controlling the tongue is a preparation for Ramadan. So let me remind myself and you with how this tongue can even spoil the month that we all seek to see this year and every year that we live to see and worship Allah in especially. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا الصيام هو لي وأنا أجزي به والصيام جنة إذا كان يوم الصيام أحدكم فلا يرفض ولا يسخب فإن شاتمه أحد أو قاتله فليقول إني صائم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in his hadith صحيح in the Sunnah of the Nasai he said every deed of the son of Adam is for him except for the fasting. When the son of Adam fasts, it's specifically for me and I will reward him for it. Fasting is a shield, it's a protection from the hellfire. From the hellfire that Allah already created, Jahannam's already existing. It's not just going to exist on the day of the day. It's already burning and raging. Just as Jannah and all its beauties is already in existence. Allah has created them for eternity. Forever and ever, they will never perish. They will never go. He said, fasting is a shield. If any one of you is fasting, let him not utter obscene talk, say anything which is foul, say anything which is wrong, nor raise his voice in anger. And if anyone insults him or wants to fight him, let him say, I am fasting. So why this warning? First, the nasiha, that the fasting will bring you good deeds, I will reward you to it as much as I want, because it's for me. It's a shield from the hellfire. Then, what's mentioned, what can spoil it? The obscene talk, the getting angry, the raising of the voice, the insulting of others. So if someone is approached with this in Ramadan, let him tell those, that person, I am fasting and move away. You don't need to spoil your fast. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, 
قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من لم يدع قول الزور والعمل به فليس لله حاجة في أن يدع طعامه وشرابه رواه البخاري Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he told us whoever does not leave off evil words evil speech and the likes of these matters whoever doesn't leave off evil deeds and sin while they're fasting Allah does not need this person's abstaining from food and drink Allah don't need us to fast if none of us worshipped Allah in the whole world you are not decreasing his kingdom one ounce or one dharra, one, one Adam's weight. And if all of us were to do it, we're not increasing his kingdom. He's the Lord of the heavens and the earth. So what does this hadith tell us? You can come fast, don't drink, don't eat all day. But if you're going to still ridicule people, mock people, insult people, backbite, lie, cheat, slander, pick fights, pick arguments, and do all these things, then guess what? You're only starving yourself. And making yourself thirsty. That's all you're getting out of your fast. So we need to correct ourselves so that our fasting is fruitful. So that Allah accepts it. So Allah rewards us for it. So Allah guides us by it. And the likes of this. And we'll end with his narration. عن الشعب عن علي رضي الله عنه أنه كان يخطب إذا حضر رمضان ثم يقول هذا هذا الشهر المبارك الذي فرض الله صيامه وَلَمْ يَفْرِضْ قِيَامَهُ أَلَا إِنَّ الصِّيَامِ لَيْسَ مِنَ الطَّعَامِ وَالشَّرَابِ وَلَكِنْ مِنَ الْكَذَبِ وَالْبَاطِلِ وَاللَّهُ قال الشعب كان يقول ذلك بعد الصلاة, الف... بعد الصلاة الفجر وصلاة العصر This hadith which is in Sunan al-Kubra في البيحقي and it is authentic tracing back to Ali رضي الله عنه الشعب he said that Ali رضي الله عنه he said he, would, or he said he would deliver a sermon when the month of Ramadan was approaching. And again, the companions used to prepare for it five months before it came. Today's the first of Shawwal, Allahu Akbar. Ramadan's 30 days away. We got a lot of work to do. I'm, 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 I'm advising myself first. A lot of work to do so that we can reap the benefits and the fruits of that month. May Allah allow us to see it. Amen. He said, he would, Ali would deliver a sermon, a sermon, a khutbah, when Ramadan would arrive. And he would say, this is the blessed month of Ramadan in which Allah has made obligatory on the Muslims of, of course that, that fit the categories that they should fast. So the fasting is an obligation. He did not obligate the Qiyam prayers or the Tarweeh prayers. This is not an obligation. This is a Sunnah. Okay? He said certainly fasting is not merely from food or drink. Fasting isn't just that you don't drink and you don't eat. He said but rather it's you fast from lying. You leave off. You restrain yourself. This is what siyam means. It's a restraint. It's a hold back. You fast from lying. You, last, you fast from falsehood. <clears throat> Bearing false witness. Saying you saw something you didn't see. Saying that this happened and it didn't. So fasting isn't just I don't eat or drink. It's that you don't يعني, lie. You don't commit falsehood or see falsehood or attest to falsehood and that you leave off vain talk. He said, Sha'bi, he said, Ali would say this after Fajr and Asr prayers, yani just preceding Ramadan. So again, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we tied the two, the tongue at all points of our life. Why? Because if you can restrain it, you'll have a better marriage. You'll have a better family household. You'll have a better friendships with your brothers and sisters in, in your, your blood relations and other than them, and with the ones non-blood related. You can control the tongue and restrain it. Then you'll put yourself يعني, in a better situation. You want to save yourself again? You restrain your tongue. And we tied it with the Ramadan. Because if you can't do it now, and you can't do it when you're fasting, then all you're getting out of your fasting is hunger and thirst. May Allah make us of those who are great and able to control our tongues Amen. and say only what is pleasing to him. Allahumma khil al-Muslimin wal-Muslimat, al-Mu'minin wal-Mu'minat, al-Ahyaat minhum wal-Amwaat, inna ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulubin ala deenik, ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulubin ala deenik, ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulubin ala deenik, subhana rabbika rabbil izzat ya amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-Mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.